It's a pretty wild scene. It's Jerusalem and Jews from the surrounding nations have gathered for the annual harvest festival known as Pentecost. The apostles and other disciples are also in town being commanded in Acts 1 and 4 by Jesus himself not to leave the city because after ascending to heaven, Jesus would soon baptize them with the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Indeed, four verses later in Acts 1, 8, Jesus tells them that the purpose of this gift is to empower them to accomplish the mission of spreading the gospel to the world. Acts 1, 8 says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit's come upon you and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. And that's exactly what follows in Acts 2. The apostles and probably the 120 others mentioned in Acts 115, which include probably women and children, they're gathered together and there's this sound like a huge gust of wind that fills the place. And all of a sudden, images of flames appear flickering on each of them. And then, if that wasn't crazy enough, the Holy Spirit fills these believers with his presence and power to such a degree that they're enabled to speak in other languages. I mean, folks outside heard this commotion and they found these Christians speaking about, quote unquote, the mighty works of God. But they heard them in native tongues of the different nationalities gathered in the city. So what does this crazy scene mean? Well, this is the birth of the church. What or who then is the church? It's God's new covenant people on God's mission of witnessing to the world that the kingdom of God has come in the resurrected Jesus. And Pentecost, well, it's just a snapshot, not only of the birth of the church, but what the church should look like every day since, being on mission in the Spirit's power. For shortly after this, Peter will preach about Jesus to those very crowds, and about 3,000 of them will believe and be baptized. Ironically, Pentecost is a festival celebrating the gathering of the first fruits of the harvest, which is exactly what the church experienced that prophetic day in Jerusalem. They gathered in the first fruits of the souls of men and women who have and will and enter the kingdom of God through faith in Jesus. It was a gospel harvest, if you will, all because the church then and today is both indwelt and empowered by the Holy Spirit.